The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In his name, welcome to the parish church of St. Columba and to this service of worship. Today, everyone is worshipping from home, but welcome to this service. Hopefully, next week, the sanctuary will be open once again. May I say a word of thanks to everyone who was able to help with the tree which is behind me um, and also the beautiful decorations around the sanctuary. A word of thanks to all of them, everyone who helped in any way to make this possible. The sanctuary is looking very beautiful. Let us in silence prepare ourselves for the worship of Almighty God. Let us worship God. With varied needs, we enter this field hospital for the healing of Christ. Let us pray. Creation, conceived and crafted in the Maker's mind, a doorway into the presence, luminous stars and oceans dark depths, mutely plead their cause and origin. The first author of beauty, immutable, inexhaustible, divine energy and love. In prayerful vigil, we step into the silence and solitude of the sacred. Elated and suspended in you, O God, in tenderness, Listen to our regrets and shortcomings. Heal and restore us with the compassion of Christ, eternity's unending empathy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, grant you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for the amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. May we give our lives into the hands of true life. Love the one who asks only love of us, enkindled 
May sparks of fire from the Baptist ignite our souls, that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with life's mystery. Amen. Our lesson today is taken from the Gospel according to St Mark at chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. John the Baptist and Jesus. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In the prophet Isaiah, it stands written, I am sending my herald ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, clear a straight path for him. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of, in token of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And everyone flocked to him from the countryside of Judea and the city of Jerusalem, and they were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. John was dressed in a rough coat of camel's hair, with a leather belt round his waist, and he fed on locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, after me comes one mightier than I am, whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and unfasten. I have baptised you with water. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Gospel lesson for today is the opening verses of Mark. We hear the story of John the baptizer in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The opening verses of the earliest gospel begins with three key words, wilderness, baptism and forgiveness. If the first chapter of Mark's gospel is an introduction to Jesus, we learn the ministry of Jesus is centred on wilderness, baptism and forgiveness. Wilderness. Stories of wilderness, of desert experiences, are common across religious traditions. In the time of the Upanishads, the Vedic poets retired into forests, deep into forests, to meditate. The Buddha left home and became an ascetic until he found enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. John the Baptist invited followers into the desert. Jesus began his ministry with six solitary weeks in the wilderness. After his conversion, St Paul spent three years hidden away in the deserts of Arabia. In the myth of the Exodus, the Hebrew people journeyed 40 years through the desert, through the wilderness. In the exile, the Israelites spent 40 years in the desert experience of Babylon. The early church fathers, Oregon and Gregory of Nyssa, understood the wilderness as a symbol of the soul's journey to God. Gregory said that it was in the desert that Moses climbed Mount Sinai and entered the cloud, the darkness, and enjoyed union with eternity. For Gregory, the Eucharist, the sacrament of bread and wine, was entering the cloud, the darkness, moving beyond sense and reason, and enjoying the union and communion of love. Wilderness in the church's history has always been interpreted metaphorically. We can apply that word wilderness to our own life's experience. St Mark's second word is baptism. John was the baptizer, the immerser. Within Judaism, ritual cleansing was well established. Immersion often took place in a river or spring. It was important, it was living water with movement and energy, clean and a source of life. Baptising people in the River Jordan, John's work would bring to life the power of the Exodus myth. It was through the Jordan, that very river, that the people entered the Promised Land. Their ancestors had moved from one world to the next. The Jordan was a symbol of liberation and renewal. John's offer of repentance and the forgiveness of sins undercut the religious claim of the temple where the priests control forgiveness for a fee, a fee many of the poor could not afford. The poor or the poor in spirit went into the desert to John and there they found in the River Jordan freedom, liberation and a taste of eternity. Biblical stories operate at different levels all the time. In our own life experience, 
can we think of moments of liberation, renewal. This is what these stories are in part about. Jesus was baptised by John after his baptism in an inner vision. Jesus saw the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of God, descending like a dove upon him and a voice saying, This is my child, the child I love, the child in whom I take great delight. This is a vision of every baptism, to discover that we are beloved souls, each one of us, loved by our Heavenly Father, our Divine Mother. In the opening verses of the earliest Gospel, we are introduced to the desert experience, to liberation and to intimacy and union with God. These stories are not about events 2,000 years ago, they are about our own story. The final word the evangelist stresses is forgiveness. In a public lecture, the former moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, David Lunan, one of our own traditions, spiritual leaders, spoke of healing, of wholeness and holiness. Carl Jung, he said, said that the most people he saw, people over 50, would be healed if they could forgive or be forgiven. Lunin cited the experience of the comedian Billy Connolly. In an interview, Connolly said that he had learned the art of nothingness, the immense power of silence, advice he was given by Sean Connery. Connolly's mother left home when he was four. He and his sister Florence were brought up and bullied by two aunts. When his father returned from serving in the RAF in Burma, Billy was physically and sexually abused by him. Connolly says, Forgiveness, it's the answer to everything. The abuse didn't bother me much as a child. It was after his death it got worse. I thought it would go away, but it didn't. It kept recurring in my mind. I read a book about forgiveness that my wife gave me, about taking the load off your shoulders, putting it down and walking away. It's like having a rucksack full of rocks. You're carrying around this guilt, shame. Nobody's told you you can walk away from it. But it's a miracle. It works. You can't let it dominate. It'll make you sick. Connolly says, forgiveness is a miracle. It's the answer to everything. Archbishop Desmond Tutu has written about his sense of guilt because he, as a young boy, regularly witnessed his father verbally and physically abusing his mother. Tutu says, if I dwell on those memories, I can feel myself wanting to hurt my father back in the same ways he hurt my mother and in ways of which I was incapable as a small boy. I see my mother's face and I see this gentle human being whom I loved so very much and who did nothing to deserve the pain inflicted on her. When I recall this story, he says. I realise how difficult the process of forgiveness truly is. Intellectually, 
I know my father caused pain because he himself was in pain. Spiritually, I know my faith tells me my father deserves to be forgiven as God forgives us, but it is still truly difficult. Tutu tells us that forgiveness takes practice, honesty, open-mindedness and a willingness to try. He says, it isn't easy. Perhaps you have already tried to forgive someone and just couldn't do it. Perhaps you have forgiven and the person did not show remorse or change his or her behaviour. It is perfectly normal to want to hurt back when you have been hurt. But hurting back rarely satisfies. We think it will, but it doesn't. If I slap you after you slap me, it doesn't lessen the sting I feel on my face, nor does it diminish my sadness over the fact that you struck me. The only way to experience healing and peace is to forgive. Until we forgive, we remain locked in our pain and locked out of the possibility of experiencing healing and freedom, locked out of the possibility of being at peace. Tutu recalls the occasion when his father asked to speak to him. Tutu had driven for hours and was tired. He told his father, we'll talk in the morning. That night, his father died. Tutu was grief-stricken. He said, it has taken me many, many years to forgive myself for my insensitivity, for not honouring my father one last time with the few moments he wanted to share with me. Honestly, the guilt still stings. Part of Tutu's journey has been to acknowledge his own anger. Anger that as a boy he did not stand up to his abusive father. He realised he needed to forgive himself. Tutu wonders if the three hardest words to say are, I am sorry. Human beings are the most complex creatures. We, all of us, are kind and not so kind creative and destructive, selfless and selfish, forgiving and in need of forgiveness. God is in our desert experiences, speaks words of love in our baptism, which we are to remind ourselves of each day. And God is there in the journey of forgiveness. The earliest gospel written begins with these three words, wilderness, baptism and forgiveness. Amen.
Let us pray. Dazzled by the darkness and mystery of the cosmos, creation's complexity and beauty, the blending of time and eternity, the majesty of the heavens, light's mind-blowing velocity, and above all, the evolution of consciousness, our capacity to consider infinitude and love's vulnerability and depth. In stillness, we wonder at the enigma of existence. Through patience and skill of the scientific method, the creative brilliance of computer technology and engineering, we give thanks for the advances made possible by careful observation, study, determination and deduction. With true joy and hope, we look forward to the rewards of vaccines, release from restrictions and a return to the normality of family and community life. At times, we are emotionally drained, holding at bay, barely, waves of hopelessness in the face of personal anxiety, national distress and international instability and human misery. The star of Bethlehem flickers faintly in the far distance, and the journey to peace, our spiritual home, is a long one. We crave that the Christ child be born anew in us. Bless our leaders. Grant them the wisdom of compromise, cooperation, respect and kindness. We pray for national healing. Guide your church, O God, that we may seek the inner life, the rich rewards of prayer, study and discipline, and in the name of love and justice, rage against poverty, its cruelty and degradation. May we take to heart the gospel, the gospel of wilderness, baptism, and forgiveness. God of the living, we pray for those who are sorely bereaved, and we remember our loved ones departed, friends and family, those who are alive in your nearer presence, reborn in life beyond this life. These prayers we offer in Jesus' name. And in his words, we would sum up all our prayers, saying together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.